Right now that we are finished with exercise one, our line art jumble, we are moving on to getting introduced to vectors in a very cursory way. We're not even going to use Adobe Illustrator, which is our vector imaging program that we will be using later to make logos, to do logo type, to do layout. Instead, we're going to use the vector shape tools within Photoshop because they are there. And what we're going to use them for is something that vectors are very helpful for, which is emoji design. What do you need emojis for? Emojis can be any size, right? Sometimes you'll see them in your text message and they're like the size of your whole phone, right? And sometimes they'll be tiny. Those all come from the same file. That's why they are vector files, just like a typeface. If you use a T in papyrus font, capital T, bold, you can make that 350 point or you can make it 12 point, right? From the same vector file, that's where that T is generated. So vector files are not pixel based. They are like shapes that are overlapped in paper. So what we're going to learn in this module is we're going to learn how to use shape tools, which are vector tools that then output as pixels when you save it. Because we'll learn how to, to work with vectors, not so much making our own, but layering vectors, warping them the same way we were compositing to create a total emoji that's our own. And we're going to become more familiar with layer effects. You know, we played with things like color overlay, gradient overlay as an extra. Here they become more essential. And we're going to learn how to change the order, move vector shapes between smart object layers. And in this case, we're going to always keep the vector shapes as a smart object layer. So they're always perfectly clean. We are not going to rasterize until the very end just by saving as a raster format like JPEG or PNG. The only thing we need to deliver for this is exercise two. So let's get into it. This is what exercise two looks like. We're going to do a cursory little sketch before next class. And we're going to do that through a program that I give you called Emoji Maker, right? And that's an incredibly limited way of creating your own emoji. That's going to be inspiration for us then to build ours from scratch and come up with our own cu custom emoji. The assignment is based on a band book theme, but I would like you to do an emoji that's based on the favorite cartoon that you did your jumble on. It can be. And if you decide to do a band book emoji, as long as you meet the requirements, it's fine. I just give you kind of a thematic way to go. So this was one for for Lord of the Rings. This was one for The Hate You Give. This was one for, um, oh, what's that one? With Piggy and Lord of the Flies. Things like that. Okay. Yeah, it could be Charlotte's Web. That's a pretty pretty brutal one for Charlotte's Web. <laughs> you can see more examples in Imgur. Remember, the unit module always kind of takes you through. But this this is for you to do. And I used to do this where it wasn't emojis. It was using shape tools to do a shape composition of just a digital image that you liked, right? So this is what we're making. Things with, with cutout shapes that are vector shapes. And then you can even add gradients to them if you want to. So there's a lot of versatility for this skill set. And then of course there are the YouTube videos like the one I'm creating right now. And you can see exercise two in the past semesters. So what do you need to do by next class? You simply need to go to this link. It's emojimaker.flaticons.com. Okay. It will give you, it will randomly generate one to start you with, and then you get to modify it. And this is because I want you to start thinking of using vectors like cutouts of construction paper. So first I need to clear the canvas. So I'm going to go to the first attribute, which is this, and I'm going to clear it. And I'm going to go to this one, and if you scroll, you'll see it's a little subtle, but the one that they've used, they've selected of the options, is in dark gray. So when you click on it, we'll clear it. And then I go to the next attribute for the mouth, and I find that mouth, and I'm going to clear it. And then for kind of accessories, this is kind of like building a, 
a character in Switch Sports or something, or a, what do they call those? Like a Wii emoji, or yeah. <laughs> these kind of things. Okay, so let's just start with the base. These are your base options. You can be a poop. You can be a purple devil. You can be a skull. You can be a ghost. You can be a demon. The ghost is funny because you can't even see it on the gray background, but it is there. <laughs> and when you um, output it, you would see it. Now, I want to do something based on the favorite cartoon. So I did Johnny Quest. My favorite Johnny Quest character is Bandit, who's this little kind of Boston Terrier. So I could use something that's a little more animal-like, or I can do something that's a little grayer. I think I'm going to start with gray. And except for the base, you can use multiples of either, any of these things. You can almost think of it like a sticker book but you can't move them around. So what I'm gonna look for is bandits, you know, Johnny Quest bandit, and maybe do an image search just so I have that reference, right? And I might even just steal that, put it onto my desktop. And then maybe have it open, because there is not a bandit emoji yet, right? So I'm starting with this. So what eyes make sense? Well, maybe this. Hmm. <laughs> Why is it not working? Maybe this eye makes sense. There it is. Or maybe something else. There are a lot of eye options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So there, it really is like layering construction paper, right? So I just put the white eyes on top of the ones I did before, but I can turn those ones off and then put them back on top. And then maybe I can put, yeah, alien eyes or bigger eyes, but they're lower down, and then try, you know, other ones on top. So you get to mess around with this. This is not what our finished project is going to be, but this is going to be a start for it. Okay? So let's see if there are some other dark shapes, you know, that I could, might be able to use. So I'll, I'll play around. Now let's get to the mouth and maybe that's the closest I get. So he has kind of this smirk. I kind of like that. Already kind of looks like a dog, but I could try other things as well. So it's kind of fun to work within these limitations and then we'll actually create it in a way that has no limitations, right? But we have a guideline. Okay, for accessories, again, you can add as many as you want. There, but there aren't that many of them. This is, this is it. I do like that they added a face mask. <laughs> but there are whiskers, which, you know, maybe there's an animal nose, even though it's the wrong color, but that might get me started. And this is, this is what you need. I feel like I need ears, but I don't see any easy way to get that. So maybe I'll put that in for the time being. And if I want to layer the eyes on top of that, I can go back to the eyes and reassert those shapes. And then they'll sit on top, just like cutouts of paper. Starting to make some sense? All right. So how do we then save this? And it says it in the directions. Honestly, you can say export, right? And you can save it as a PNG. It actually allows you to save it as a vector file because what we're doing is manipulating vectors, but we're not going to use that. But if you want, you can download the SVG and we can play with it later on once we're using Illustrator, right? But we're going to use the, the PNG. It's going to go to downloads. And this is what it looks like. It's not that big. In fact, you'll get better resolution and so I'll often ask you to do this if you do a screen grab of it. Because it's a vector, so let me get out of this screen. If I just zoom in, because it's a vector, I can make it as large as I want, as long as I have the, the space on my browser. Yep. And then I can just do a screen grab. And that vector will always be clean because it's being outputted in pixels in real time as it's resized. 
right? The file is not pixel based, but the way we see it is pixel based. So now I've just captured those. And that's what you need for next class. Can you screen grab on Tuesday? You can screen grab. There's a print screen button. And that's what gets you into it. And there is a targeted print screen as well. All right, so what I show you here, I think I even give you directions for both PC and Mac um, somewhere. <laughs> but, but yes, screen grabs are very helpful, and we'll be using them a lot, especially for kind of sketching and building. So once you have that, here we go. So yeah, targeted screen grab for Mac, targeted screen grab for, for Windows. Try to get a nice image of it, but it doesn't, it's just a guideline. Once we have it, then we go in and next class we're going to learn how to build on top of this with our own shapes that we have full control of and eventually make our own emoji and then we can add layer styles to it and effects to it to customize it. All right, that's it.